than you know, past 19th century put together. <coughs> so the 20th century was that kind of that crazy because you had Frederick Nietzsche. So talking about morality and where it comes from, true, these are very intense topics. So during the the talk and the conversation, just pull all questions to the end, and then we can answer whatever questions you want. It's just that you know, create a thought and all that stuff. So yeah, no, I get ADHD. All right. So does anyone know what moral relativism is? Like just people just it's like you just mm -hmm. you like you just believe what what comes kind of like thing like it doesn't matter like it just like whatever you believe in I believe in type of like yeah you know there, there's like there's no absolute truth no it? absolute truth yes so there's uh, no absolute truth gotcha. so you have um, morality which comes from the name of relativism so I'm going to define morality. <clears throat> This is from the Oxford Dictionary. Principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior. Hmm. Very simple, right? Now, relativism. <clears throat> what is relativism? The most widely held moral view in our culture is called relativism. Relativism it holds societies and or individuals decide what is right and wrong and that those values vary from culture to culture or person to person. There are no objective universal moral truths, just conventions of behavior that are created by people of, for people that are subject to change. There are three different forms, and actually four different forms, I'm going to actually go over three different forms. So, <clears throat> moral relativism is saying that no matter what I feel, it's good. Hmm. So if I say, hey, it's okay to go slap someone because I just felt like it, Amen. it's okay, right? You can literally just go out and slap people, right? In a, in a relative world, we can't say anything's wrong. That's mm -hmm. the challenge with that. You, someone can literally walk down the street and say, you know, hey, they go rob a bank. You can't say it's wrong because there is no right and wrong. There's two, there's different types of logic. So there's two types of logic I want to talk about. There's the and or, or either or. Hmm. One is, um, the and or is relativism. You and I are both right because we both feel that we're right. Hmm. The either or is saying that, hey, listen, either you're right or I'm right. This is a whole philosophical base, and this is what people, this is what, Nietzsche, all these atheists came up with, you know, well, everyone's right because everyone has their own point of view. That doesn't necessarily make it right. When is rape right? <laughs> when is theft right? When is murder right? When is pedophilia right? I can keep going, right? We can keep going with all these different uh, moral concepts. So. This means, so morality, so we're going to use subjective and objective rather than relative. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So subjective means it's either by the culture, the society, the person, and there's also religious subjectivism, which I'm going to talk about at the end. Mm. What are those four again? <clears throat> Say that again. Uh, cultural. Mm -hmm. It's the society. I'm going to go over each one. Okay. Um, the individual and religious mm -hmm. subjectivism. That's an interesting one for me. <clears throat> so before we get into that, I want to read a passage. Uh, Matthew 6, 24 says, No one can be a slave to two masters, since either he will hate one and love the other, or devote to one and despise the other. You cannot be slaves of God and of money. So I know he's talking about money here, but I want to talk about being our own masters. Mm -hmm. See, the biggest, do you know what the most popular religion in the United States is? I want to say... Self? Humanism? Humanism, humanism. yes, humanism. humanism. It's a me culture. If you notice that video, all these self-help gurus, mm. that, listen, you're the best. Yeah. You can be the best you can be. Your best life I now. Mm. Yes, <laughs> that's going to be our religious no, subjectivism. Lie. Uh, be nice. <laughs> be nice. Not mentioning people's names. 
So the, the subjective moral, uh, subjective morality. <clears throat> so you have cultural relativism. This is based on it observed by different cultures seem to have different values. Now, the difference between moral relativism and moral absolutes is that one calls their moral their moral values mm -hmm. a moral absolute called it law. Mm. Moses didn't come down from Mount Sinai with the ten values. Mm. Mm. He came down with the ten commandments, which means law, mm. right? The law, which was literally written on stone. Mm. So that is God's moral standpoint. Mm. So now we have God's moral standpoint. But we're going to kind of really focus on subjectivism because we, in a church, in our society, we actually deal with that a lot, subjectivism. Because oh, that, people go according to their personal um, experiences to make certain decisions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that helps, but that doesn't mean it's an absolute. Right. God's the only thing that's absolute, and there's absolute truth versus subjectivism and all that stuff. So we're going to talk about culture, though. So they're saying that each culture, from every different culture, there's different values. So therefore, it doesn't matter what that culture does versus that culture, because then they are both right because it's according to the culture. Mm. So once again, when is rape right? Mm. When is molestation right? What, what about cannibalism? Do you know in certain cultures cannibalism is okay? Yeah. <laughs> How messed up is that? <clears throat> now let's go to different cultures in the United States. Mm. What about this culture, Bergen County? Sucks. Bergen County versus Passaic County. Is it a different culture? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I would say the language, even the way they talk. The way they talk, like what do you see? The way people think. Yeah, the way they live. The way they what they live. value, like, <coughs> with materialism. Someone told me that uh, they love going to Kentucky because all they do is talk about Bibles and babies. <laughs> it's a different culture, right? So, I always said Bergen is different from Kentucky. You know, Bergen's from Kentucky, but, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but you go to Texas, you go to North Carolina, you go to California, it's always a different culture. But if morality was based on culture, <coughs> then who would determine what is right and wrong? And how could you come up with laws? That's my question. One thing you'll see is that I ask a lot of questions. You have to ask a lot of questions, especially in apologetics. Mm -hmm. So the subject of apologetics is, the word comes, is called apologia. Mm -hmm. In um, First Peter 3.15, you give an apology a defense. That's the word for defense in Greek. <coughs> so we as Christians need to know because our people perish for lack of knowledge. And you see that in the church a lot. That's why there's not a lot of apologists. So, so I'm saying it's based from culture to culture. So, if we have Spanish people here, right? Latino. Latino, right? You know, African American, you have Philip. Do we have a Filipino here? No. Paisanos. Italian. 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 Right? We're just white. <laughs> <laughs> just said it like Anglo Saxon stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, so if we were to say that from household to household, because there's different cultures in the household, then therefore how would we determine what is right and wrong? Hmm. It makes absolutely no sense. So then you have the culture from where people come from, mm -hmm. it changes certain aspects, right? Like, I'll, I'll give you, um, Italians love, uh, they believe in this, um, this thing called the eye, uh, what's it called? The evil, uh, eye. the evil eye. Yeah, so they believe that if someone actually looks at you. The wrong way. In the wrong way, with an evil eye, that yeah. give you bad luck. <laughs> yes. So that's why you see so the, the, the horn, the Italian horn? Yeah. That's true. The red horn. Malocchio, it's called. Yes. Malocchio. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It's the eye, the eye. Yeah. So it's wow. a cultural thing. So and so, like, you see different cultural thought process, which the thought process starts to now turn into certain cultural <laughs> norms, which turns into cultural laws. Mm. Mm. Interesting. So all that, all those little things, so they start taking little things from there. Then you have conventionalism. Conventionalism is a view that society decides what is right and wrong. It contrasts the uh, cultural relativism, which says that there is no right or wrong answer. Conventionalism claims that there is a right and wrong. 
but it varies from society to society. The majority rules, morality comes simply what is legal. <clears throat> what is legal? What is legal? Is it right? This is a good question. <laughs> so uh, the big one we're gonna, we're gonna you know probably discuss is abortion. <clears throat> is abortion right? Yeah. You guys should shout it out. Whatever. No. I don't think so. <clears throat> So why is abortion not right? Because it's death. Well, it's, it's murder. Murder. Yeah. murder. Yeah. Life. You're being the own judge. Of, You're being about being judge, yeah. right? But society says it's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. But in Mexico, you don't have to. You can't kill. You can't abort children. You know that, right? In Mexico, you can't. In Mexico, you can't. That makes a lot of sense. Right, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cartel thing. Right? No, like now it makes sense. Yeah. Right? Well, what I'm saying is, it's, you know, from this perspective, uh -huh. if things change from society to society, so back in the time in like 1500 BC when they were sacrificing children to Molech, mm -hmm. so they had this metal statue they used to heat up and throw babies on it and play drums. But that was okay then. It's not okay now, though, right? <laughs> Talk about abortion, right? It's like pr practically the same thing. Because mm -hmm. they're killing children. Mm -hmm. um, so the concept, side note, abortion, the reason why I don't believe it, um, if you were to think from a scientific perspective, mm -hmm. the way atheists and evolutionists believe that we came about is that it was a, some primordial food that like lightning struck and made this amoeba, this one-celled organism that supposedly had... DNA and the information to replicate itself because it makes sense because <laughs> the first law of thermodynamics goes out the window. Matter cannot be created, destroyed. So, <laughs> so if hmm. they believe that was life, why not the cells that came together from a man and a woman hmm. to create more cells is not hmm. what you think? Right, right. A simple cell is more complex. You know, Pastor Frank says from a, than a Google corporation, but it's far more complex than a Google co corporation because it does add all this information. That's why you have all this DNA. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. so all right, back to conventionalism. So, so it, it varies from society to society. So if it varies from society to society, then hmm. was slavery ever right? Someone could be like, so, somebody's view could be to say, you know, as a business, it was a business, you know, and they, their view of like human life wasn't, you know, that high. So mm -hmm. they feel like, okay, well, you know, because of the color of that skin, you know, I can sell that to this person, you know, and make some profit out of it or whatever. They still made their own, their own judgment on what race was lesser to then have that business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It was their own judgment, you know. And then they had these certain concepts that supposedly were okay at the time and legal. But does that make it right? Mm. Right and legal are two different things. Because mm. if laws change according to society standards, mm. does that make, well, slavery okay? No, it doesn't. Abortion's not okay. Um, the treatment of women in certain societies because there is Sharia law. Let's talk about yeah. Sharia law. Which I'm actually brought these books up here so you guys can see. So there's No God But One, mm. Allah or Jesus, and Bel Qureshi. He actually went home with his Lord recently. Yeah, he's like I saw 36 that. years old. Uh, he has stomach cancer. But he was a Muslim who became a, um, a Christian. Yeah. In college because his roommate was, uh, or a friend of his, was uh, a Christian. And they were used to the debate back and forth. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So he and the Christian knew his stuff, so and <laughs> helped lead him to Christ. So, no God but one. And then there's one called Jesus Among Other Gods by Robbie Zacharias. Yeah. I have a ton of books, so if you have any questions about the book, plenty of books. Favorite books, go to. Okay. So, what is legal is not right. Okay, so, so far we have a cultural thing that's not always right. Mm -hmm. Then we have conventionalism, which is society. It's not always right. Now we have universal subjectivism. Universal subjectivism. This claims that all truth is subjective, that is, in or dependent on the knower. The knower. Say that again. 
<coughs> Universal subjectivism claims that all truth is subjective, that is, in or dependent on the knower. So it's dependent on the knower. So what does that mean? On the individual. individual? On the individual. How scary is yeah. that? Terrible. We know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Mic drop. Mic drop. So I kind of gave you defenses for each one. This is the this is the most interesting one because this is what you're seeing a lot today. Yeah, I see that a lot. Everyone thinks they know. Everybody thinks. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So you think about this. Can you build a house with a broken foundation? No. Nah. Okay. So as Christians, we believe that all sinners are all broken, right? Right. Every person across the board will say that no one's perfect. Right. So it's one thing I always say, no one's perfect. So therefore, how could you say that you're going to come up with a moral standard if no one's perfect? Hmm. Yeah. It's a kind of contradiction right there. The thing is, these are all self-contradicting arguments that atheists throw out there. Oh, it's my society. Well, that doesn't make it right. Was that right? Let's say the IRS said, um, hey, it's law now to pay 50% of taxes. Is that right? Someone's getting smoked. <laughs> <laughs> but according to universal subjectivism, guess what? If you smoke someone, it's cool. It's okay. I took my taxes. You can't say it's wrong. <laughs> hey. Now, these are the issues that we're dealing with now. We're dealing with homosexuality, obviously. Uh, <coughs> we're dealing with transgender. And I'm, I'm, I will never say condemn people, mm -hmm. judge people, none of that. All right. We shouldn't. Here's what <coughs> we should do. We should pray for those people, love on those people. And that's the only way that Christ brings us to him is through love, right? So the universal subjectivism, the challenge is that we have all these people that are listening to a whole ton of people. Other, you're listening to other people, and other people are telling you how to think. Mm -hmm. There's preachers out there that are teaching you how to think. Wrong. One thing I loved about Pastor Frank when uh, I first started coming, he says, if anything that is set up here is wrong, you have the right to tell me. You can question it. Big. And that is so true because we have, as Christians, have the authority to question people. Mm -hmm. And we need to question what's going on in society and going on in, um, with other people. So our generation, you're going to hear like a lot of guys from like, um, these self-help guys who people believe that their own wealth, health, is a mindset. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes everything in their life. As it becomes everything in their life, the one thing that holds society together is broken. Let's talk about family. Husband, wife, children, right? Husband, wife, children. That is the smallest battle formation in society also. Also in the church, but also in society. How do you appropriate? How do you keep going? as a species, let's say, right? If we were to take it from an atheistic perspective, mm. how do we keep going as a species? Mm. Now I get now, now they can like clone things and mm -hmm. try to make babies and all this other craziness. Mm -hmm. But before all the technology, how do we keep going? Right. Right? So because they, we think that things are okay, or we think that we're bettering things, doesn't make it right. You know that Hitler tried to make a better race. He was killing Jews. Was that right? But listen, he wanted to help the world. <laughs> By killing people? Yes, let's eradicate an entire race of people. As we eradicate an entire race of people, does that make it right because you're trying to make the perfect race? Does that even make sense? But guess what? Who did he read? Nietzsche. Um, Nietzsche. Yeah. So many people. Stalin? You know Stalin? He was going to school for ministry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That I know. Yeah. Stalin. He was going to school for ministry, then he turned, back from, uh, turned his back on God. And because he thought that there was no God, he killed about 15 million of his own people. 15 million. Damn. 
So people as a society, when they, and this all kind of connects together. So you have these universal subjectivism, these people that think they know what's up, and then they start creating these laws and start creating cultures. <clears throat> so you have this broken foundation that you cannot build a house upon. So in the Bible it talks about building a house on sand or on a rock. The sand analogy is is far more in depth when you start like really thinking about it because if you don't build it on a rock, right, you have a proper foundation for your moral standpoint. Now your moral framework is compromised because we are we live in a fallen world and we're fallen people. We're sinners because we've all told a lie before, right? Mm -hmm. We all deserve what? Death. Death. That's the craziest thing. And people are like, well, why do we deserve death? Well, it says all sins deserve, you know, the death sentence. So if all sins deserve death, if we've all told, told a lie before, if we've all told, uh, stolen something before, blasphemed the Lord's name, committed adultery before, this, those are four out of the ten, <clears throat> what do we need to get a sinner guilty? So because of our moral framework and all the things that we've sinned, we've already proven that we can't do it on our own. So by understanding that we can't do it on our own, and that our moral standpoint and our foundation is completely broken, why would we therefore come up with ideas for what's right and wrong? Hmm. A lot of questions there, right? Hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to stop right here, right now. Anyone have any questions right now about what we just talked about? It's kind of like intense, deep. Oh man. No questions? Oh, it comes to. <laughs> uh, how do you how, how do you tell a, a a a woman who you know who says she's pregnant but she feels like she you know like it's her body you know uh -huh. and you know like you know like uh, I guess explaining to her you know I mean she might not even believe in God or anything like that but you know she's her thinking is probably like, you know, she has her own thing of saying, like, I know what's right or what's wrong, you know what I mean? And but she wants to abort this baby and I guess she doesn't she's not viewing it as a life, you know, so like as a Christian, you know what I'm saying, how would how can we I guess, very carefully. Very yeah. carefully. <laughs> well, I mean, because this is the real stuff that's out there in the world, yeah. so I'm just saying if, if we were to approach a woman that wants to uh, have an abortion uh, for a child. I would talk about her life and of God. You have to talk about God because God created life. Yeah. And God put this beautiful life in your body. And God made that a part of you. It might not be something you wanted, but it is part of you. And I know people will say, well, it's also for women's rights and whatever the case may be, but it's only at least half. But the other half is you. It's part of you, it's part of your genetics. It's, you know, God gave you that to uh, to nurture and to love. Mm. And I would ask her, like, how would you feel if that were to happen to your mother? Would you want to be aborted? <coughs> ask her. And it's a it's a tough question. You have to be very sincere with those things. Yeah, I know, because sometimes you know, we we might, I think all of us could probably know, can name one person, yeah. you know, or know somebody, <clears throat> whether a, a relative or a. a <clears throat> a friend, you know what I mean, that we, we, we might know or, or we care about and they must have done this maybe, they did it more and more than once or they've done it, or you know what I'm saying, I'm just, it's like, as a friend, you know what I mean, how can, you know, we can kind of show them a way, like, look, you know, life matters and, you know, that person, you know, that matters, you know what I mean? I know people, man. I'm just saying. Send them to me. Send them to me. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, it's just, you know, as a guy, yeah, but, you know, I mean, you know. But I think so the that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I, yeah, I think that topic is it's a hard one, but it's that's when we have to start speaking truth and love, and a lot, a lot, a lot of love. Yeah, I agree. Right. So, any questions about the moral subjectivism part? <coughs> um, no. All right. So now we're going to do objective moral and moral absolutes. So, for objective morality to be truth. Obviously, it has to be objective, not subjective. There's a moral duty, duty for all people. 
and eternal, it's not temporal, no obligation, uh, there's an obligation, it's duty throughout all the time, and it's universal, duty for all places, so you skip the cultural, it goes through codes of cultures, societies, and people, mm-hmm. right? So, in order to decide which one is right and wrong, we must first understand what is truth. This is where you guys can shout it out. <laughs> this will be fun. What do you think truth is? The Bible. Truth. What is truth? Um, it's funny because Pilate asked that question. Yeah, what is truth? I was in to Jesus. He said, what is truth? Mm-hmm. The easy answer would be like, Jesus is truth. <laughs> right? That would be nice. Give me one we want. Right? Um... Well, let's use examples of truth. Is two plus two four? It's five. It's five. <laughs> Universal subjectivism, right? <laughs> I'm just saying that that somebody would say is, is you know, would, would blue, disagree. Yeah. Right? The way we decide what truth is, we have to understand that there is something, there's a foundation that we are relative to. Yeah. Okay? So how do you know you're moving in a car? Because yeah. Joe's driving. <laughs> no, you see things passing. You, you see things that a tree that's staying there. It's a permanent fixture. You see it. You feel it because you know that you were at a point and you changed. Level. How do you know you lost weight? Your pants you don't fit. Your pants don't fit. You lost weight. <laughs> your yeah, your pants don't fit. They're too big. They're too big. They're too big. There was a standard, there was a foundation that we had to go off of. But, and when you're driving, you have a standard to go off of. Like, all right, there's this thing that's standing there. I know the trees are right there, so I'm going to keep driving past it. So now I know I'm moving. Mm-hmm. The faster it goes, the faster I know I'm going, right? Okay. So, because that's the same thing with truth. To understand what truth is, we must understand where it comes from and who, who is truth. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yep. Don't come to the Father except through me. He didn't say, I, I am a way, a truth, or a life. A life. He said, the truth. So which implies that there is some type of absolute truth. Mm-hmm. Right. The challenge with subjectivism, there's no absolute truth because it's constantly changing. Mm-hmm. Because God is unchanging, which makes it absolute. Mm-hmm. So I know absolutely that there is gravity. That's an absolute thing. We know that what goes up must come down. And that's another absolute would be matter cannot be created or destroyed. Mm -hmm. Right? So evolutionists... Except for the Big Bang. Except for the Big Bang, right? (laughs) Because that's the only exception to the rule. Yeah, kind of (laughs) dumb. Well, that's what they say. That's what, what they, they say, say yes. No, it's like, there was a whole ball of matter that was really hot and it spun up and it went... <laughs> but then, yeah. right, in every textbook that you teach your kids, that matter doesn't... They can't change. That, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's... It's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Self-contradicting. Yeah. So all the stuff is self contradicting They just contradict themselves. And they have this what's called a circular argument. So they constantly keep going around in circles. I recommend <laughs> watching Ray Comfort. Evolution is God. Yes. Evolution is God. Yes. Definitely worth watching. Evolution versus God, and he... Um, it's like 30 minutes. Yeah, he, he messed with... Yeah, um, he's amazing. Movies. Yeah, you'll like it. It's so amazing. Yeah, I was like yeah. laughing. No, but it's it's real. It's just... I know. It's real like, people. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but they don't have... Especially when he interviews, have, like, science. Like, on students yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, with the... Uh, like, with the finches? Series. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, it's... it's so it's, 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 like, no, show me a species that... We turned into another evolved. species, yeah. and they're like, well, this finch turned into this finch. It's, it's, still, it's still, still a finch. finch. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great for apologetics. No, it's, it's great, great for apologetics, apologetics yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love, I love this subject. This is the subject that got me thinking about theology. Mm-hmm. Apologetics and theology are, like, intermingled. Because in order to do apologetics, you must understand theology. Mm-hmm. Like, the cosmological arguments, teleological arguments, all these different types of arguments, which are biblical truths, but also theological truths and theological concepts, which is systematic, systematic theology. All this stuff kind of comes in, and we need to be understanding that, hey, listen, we need to, we need to know this stuff. So with our moral standpoint, if it's not objective and it's subjective, who cares what we do? 
we have a moral standard. That moral truth is called the Ten Commandments. Mm. That's how you know you're a sinner. Because we're unable to get to that point, that's why Jesus had to come down 2,000 years ago and die on a cross six hours on Friday, take the entire sins upon the world, be scourged, beaten, spit on, crown thorns put on his head, carry a cross like a mile, while after all that stuff happened, and then be crucified for six hours. Wow. All that had to happen, but then he took the entire wrath of God upon him. So imagine all your sins, 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 and my sins. How bad are those sins? It's a lot of sins, right? Too much, man. Past, present, and future. All people. Billions and billions and billions of people. That's why you call it. That's why you call it like the cup. Like it's a cup. Like, but that cup, it was like, it was like no other cup. It's like you know what I mean. It's like. The weight of it, you know what I mean, is like you can't even, um, no, no man, no, you know, no angel, no, 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 no other person could, could take, could drink that cup, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, you're percent right. And that's why it says God was, Jesus was absolutely perfect in every which way. He was righteous, yeah. So, the absolute moral standpoint, if we're not understanding that it's absolute and it's objective, it's outside of us. Mm-hmm. Objective means it's in us, like we choose. Objection <coughs> means it's outside of us. Like, there's certain laws that are objective. If you commit murder, guess what? You go to jail. Mm -hmm. Or death penalty, whatever the case may be. But it's throughout whatever state you're in, right? Mm -hmm. Or federal, uh, or country you're in, depending on what what it is. Those moral laws, once again, they're moral laws, not moral values. Moral values means that we don't have to adhere to anything. We're not accountable to anyone. But if it's a moral law, we're accountable to something. Mm. That means we have to follow it. I know that if I drive 90 miles an hour down the street and a cop catches me, it's going to be a bad day for me, right? It's, a, it's something that's objective, meaning that if I speed,